Investors continue to search for yield, uh, has driven a number of Canadian REITs to record highs in 2012. REITs have seen a total return of 75% since 2009. But will REITs continue to outperform the market in 2013? Joining us right now is Jeff Olin, President and CEO of Vision Capital, which runs the Vision Opportunity Fund, focusing primarily on the Canadian real estate sector and invest in uh, publicly traded equity and debt securities. Jeff, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. The REIT sector, as, as you've just heard me say, has had a, a stellar year, but are, are valuations getting ahead of themselves? I think on average, the REIT sector is fairly valued. Uh, we find better value in real estate operating companies as opposed to REITs. We're a real estate fund, but actually have a very low weight to REITs, but a very high weight to real estate operating corporations. And what people don't realize is about half of the market capitalization in Canada are actually operating companies, including mm -hmm. some of the biggest that you'd be familiar with, the Brookfield Properties and First Capital. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking at, um, we were looking at your reporting uh, letter of the last quarter and indicates you're, you're pretty bullish on specific yes. um, specific real estate securities. So where are you finding value right now and, and why? Again, we're finding value in some of the corporate names. Uh, our three biggest holdings are the common shares of Morgard Corporation, which we believe are, is independently valued at over $170 a share and is trading in the range of $110 a share. Uh, and remind us what Morgard is. Morgard is a diversified entity, diversified uh, commercial uh, office, uh, not so much office, but office retail, some residential, diversified across North America. Um, very well managed as well as a pension fund advisor. Uh, so that's one name on the larger cap name. Um, I'm sorry, what was the number you gave us there? You reckon its assets are truly worth what? Uh, well, they're independently valued under new IFRS rules of uh, higher than $170 per share. We think it's probably higher than that, but that gives minimal value to some of their prime land sites under IFRS. So uh, on a pre-tax value, it's over $170 a share and trading around 110 So Do you think there's $60 worth of free real estate going? Why is the market not catching on to that? It's, again, a corporation, not a REIT. Uh, it pays a small dividend, mm. uh, very de minimus yeah, dividend. The They're yield. using their cash flow 0. to buy back their shares and buy back pro buy properties without relying on bankers. Um, so it doesn't get the same level of coverage. There's one analyst that covers it. In contrast, they own 45% of a, a publicly traded REIT, Morgard REIT, okay. which trades much closer to its net asset value and and they pay a big dividend so there's a fair bit of analyst coverage um, as a result so we tend to focus on names whether they're large or small uh, that have inefficiencies in their pricing one factor is they don't pay yield main street equities is another one uh, of extraordinary company that's growing from 272 apartment units in western canada to 8500 a day over 1.1 billion in asset value with $10 million of net external equity. Yeah, 1.1 billion with 10 million. No dividend, value creation model, unique entity in North America, and we believe this company can grow uh, 30 to 50% over the next few years without diluting common shareholders $1. Apartments in Western Canada. Jim. Jeff, I think George Soros said famously that people shouldn't forget real estate is really a strip of future cash flows mm -hmm. with a discount rate. Mm -hmm. If in 2013 there's a shock to interest rates, a vibration that they will go higher, what does that do to the real estate universe? Uh, I'll give you a couple of answers to that. One is uh, we believe and history has proven that supply and demand fundamentals trump interest rates, whether interest rates are going up or going down every time. And the supply and demand fundamentals for Canadian commercial and multifamily rental residential are the best we've seen in 30 years. We have low single-digit vacancy rates. The Canadian banks haven't forgotten the 1990s. They've been very little speculative development. Um, and the fundamentals are sound. Can it, Toronto condo market, a little bit scary. Doesn't really impact our universe. Uh, but that's an exception, Vancouver housing market. But the low single-digit vacancy rates, people have jobs in this country, so they're working, they're buying stuff in retail centers, they need places to live, uh, industrial production, the fundamentals are sound. We don't believe there will be a spike in interest rates. And by the way, the spread between cap rates or the property valuation equation and long-term interest rates is about 100 basis points higher than has historically been. So in other words, investors are already pricing in 
a significant uptick in interest rates, even though we don't see it. The cap rate, of course, is the, the return you get from buying a piece the of real estate. Unlevered return. And there's a lot of focus on cap rates, which is simplistic equation is the net operating income or the profit, um, you know, divided by the cap rate to determine value. A lot of focus on cap rates, not enough focus on what's happening to the net operating income. So what's happening to in the markets to rental rates and supply and demand. I, I got to ask you, I mean, we're surrounded by cranes here in downtown Toronto. Is there going to be a condo crash or anything like it? There is a condo correction underway. Uh, I believe, and I was wrong in this for five years, but I've been right on it for the last six months. Uh, it will continue. There will be a meaningful correction. I do not believe it will be a crash because what the condos are doing, 80% of condos sold in downtown Toronto are to non-owner occupied. They're being rented out and they're providing the rental housing stock that is sorely needed mm -hmm. because we haven't had rental housing, uh, rental apartment buildings built. Jeff, thanks very much. I hope you'll come back soon because right. there's a lot of real estate areas we'd love to cover with you. Nice to have you. Thanks, nice thanks for coming in, Jeff. Jeff Olin is president and CEO of Vision Capital.